Do you want more? More time, more balance, more love, more sex, more money, more real, and less bullshit? This is the Women Wanting More podcast with Dr. Karen Osborne. Real life, real stories, plus real tips to get you more of what you want. So sister, your life is supposed to be crazy. It's supposed to be that way. It's been a lot of talk on the podcast recently, heavier stuff, right? Like bigger stuff, bigger issues, me coming at you, you know, punching you in the face with truth. But let me talk to you about what this really all means and why it's so so important to know that your life is supposed to be crazy. It's supposed to be crazy. So I've had the gamut today from, it's my oldest son's birthday today, Tyson is seven as I record this podcast, to getting up early in the morning, having my more for my morning time, walking my dogs, cold as shit out today. Not only this cold in Victoria, but cold out this morning, walking along the ocean, along the beach. It's cold. Get back in, journal, meditate, study, teach. And my, actually Tyson was up first this morning. Uh, Happy. It's my birthday. Yay. Uh, And then my youngest gets up and he's got a little bit of a a mat on because it's all about daddy for both my boys these days. And then Tyson proceeds to have a meltdown about 30 minutes later because he's playing an iPad game. For some reason, we can't figure out why there's music playing in the background. Found out later that somehow he ter- opened up the music app and started playing music. And But it was a big thing. I get mad at him. He's freaking out. I'm doing the, but you have an iPad. Do you know how many kids don't have an iPad? You should be grateful. Going down that whole route. Been there before, sister? With your children? I then see something entirely different in the moment as I'm trying to get him out the door. Ed has taken, my husband has taken our youngest then to daycare. We got Kai at the door. I'm like, okay, we got one piece out the door. Now we got Tyson and he's flipping out. And I'm not being empathetic and I'm being mad. Now I'm yelling at my boy. And I look at my son and in that moment I go, oh, it's birthday today. We adopted our son. Seven years ago today, he was birthed in the world by his amazing birth mommy, who we still have connection with. We see her once a year now. And we stay in touch. We're on Facebook together, and we send her pictures. And she loves him. But yet, seven years ago, you know, this this was when he was detached from his... The, the craziness of my life right now. Now someone's trying to call me as I'm recording this podcast. Okay. And there's no like not answer on this. So you're going to hear this in the background. There we go. Okay. <laughs> trying really going to tell the story and that happens. So so a quick kind of a side note about um, children who are adopted. I mean, a- amazing. It's open adoption. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As I'm trying to tell this story and I take a call from our nanny service. So here we go. So what they've actually found in the research is that with children who were adopted, that regardless of um, how the adoption went down, of course, in ours, open adoption, healthy, beautiful, loving, all of that, there is still an innate feeling that children have at some point, it's not every point in their life, but at some point that they will have this feeling of abandonment of rejection it's a physiological thing that they find happens in all kids are adopted so i'm looking at tyson this moment as he's flipping out and it dawns on me in that moment suddenly i found empathy that was missing in that moment and i went ah i go i want to i go tyson what are you feeling sad he says now, the, you know, it's, it's not, he's not at a point to kind of be able to verbalize what he's feeling and all And a lot of people, listen, who are adopted, they, they don't, they don't, they don't, they're not able to verbalize the, 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 what that feeling is or where it comes from. It's just simply the feeling. And I looked at him and I was thinking of my friend, 
Jill and what she shared with me yesterday yesterday about something which is called I'm gonna totally screw it up because I've heard of this before and it's a Hawaiian word and it's it is a way to um, really heal yourself through a series of words which sounds kind of really woo woo especially coming from me but it goes like this and it's, it is oh gosh how a pono 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 I'm totally messing it up I'll get the link for that in the show notes this will make more sense but a fascinating story of this man that worked in a mental hospital. And basically by healing yourself is the way this kind of goes is that you're able to really heal others, right? And that that is essentially so spot on. Like it is so true that all these things that I talk about here in the podcast, sister, is about you. It's about you caring for you. It's my deep why for women wanting more with this movement, is that I fully believe that if you plugged in to the powerful woman that you are, that you would really recognize and plug into the power that you have as a woman, as a wife, as a mother, as a businesswoman, that there would be more love in this world, period. I fully believe that. And so there's four things that you say with this, and it goes like this. And you're saying it to yourself, by the way. But I was saying it to Tyson and to myself in the same moment, which goes like this. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. So I looked at Tyson and I said that over and over again. I didn't see the thank you part, but I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I said it to my, I'm saying it to myself as I said it to him. And I also wanted to hear those words. He stopped crying and looked at me. You felt hurt. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And then we got into the car. And then we started talking about his birthday. And we had all the cupcakes for his class. And he's super pumped. And then we're driving in the car. And he's like, Mommy, I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry. It's like, it's okay, buddy. Mommy loves you. Mommy forgives you. It's okay. And there's those moments that you have in the day like that. There's those moments anger, frustration, got mad at my husband actually too. I'm like, you know what? I, I did all this stuff for Tyson's birthday. You never once asked to help me. And then again, it dawned on me later of just like, oh shit, I never asked for help. Yes, I feel all the same shit too, sister. What happens is long you do this work, you realize very quickly what you're doing. And it came from me just saying, you know what, Ed? Can I talk to you over here? Because I got I to gotta tell you something. I got to get this out right now. I am mad that you never fucking said once to me, can I help with Tyson's birthday? The cupcakes, the cake, the birthday planning, the party favors, the invitations sent out, like all of this stuff, the birthday present. Uh, you've done fucking shit. I'm fucking pissed. You should help. He just kind of looked at me and said, okay. Then I walked away. I'm like, good, I got that out. And then I'm then like literally 10 minutes later, I go to him and I said, you know what? I love you and I'm sorry. This is not on you. It's on me. I should have asked you for help. This is ridiculous. I can't help you. I expect you to read my mind. I will work better at doing that and stop thinking God, I have to take everything on to kind of for you to, you know, for you then saying like, well, maybe you're not feeling well today. Or you're, you know, you've got stuff going on with your business. You've got a launch. You've got this. You've got that. It's like, I'm going to ask you for help. I'm not going to expect something to happen that I don't actually ask. I don't have a conversation. Expect to read my mind. It's ridiculous. So I went through these moments, both of those moments in a matter of maybe like uh, 60 minutes. Crazy, right? And you'll have those moments. And you'll have those moments where you come from this like, ah, uh, like this epiphanies, these moments in life, these like, these ahas, these revelations, these insights. And then in two, two hours later, you're going to crash into the fucking ground and something will come up. You'll be triggered. You'll be pissed. You'll be sad about something. So I went on throughout the rest of my day and I, I had some work to do. Had a couple kind of like comments in social media that triggered me a little bit. And I put a comment like, bah, let me throw it out there. And the fuck is something going to come back? And, and then I had some personal appointments. And then got on the phone with and getting some more things ready for my live event, which is actually coming up in uh, Women Want More Live 4.0, coming up in three days. 
more of the details get ready for these incredible women that are coming here to Victoria, BC. Three intensive days. Discover their power. Find it, who they are, clarity, what they want. And then I got on the phone with a, uh, we'll just refer to it as like a learning center, learning academy in Calgary, Alberta. And uh, I'm going to be going there with Tyson in December. And we really just discovering about just the way that Tyson learns and some challenges having in school right now. His brain just works different. It's not going to be the traditional way that a lot of us do learn. And in order for us to really help him with that is for him to understand how he learns best. And they're going to really teach him the tools and how to do that. And I have a good friend that took her two of her girls through this and just had incredible results. So I got on the phone with them and I'm watching these videos, learning how these kids' brains work. And I'm like, holy shit, that's my boy. That's it. That's it. So much of the stuff that now makes so much sense. So I got on the phone and had some conversation and we had some foreign sold up before and it looks like it's going to be a fit. I'm super pumped. I'm like this is such a great solution for my boy. We get to go down to Calgary for a week together and have this experience. And man, I'm so thankful that I can do this. I can take this time away and we can financially do this. And it will be here with Kai and have some quality time with Kai. And it'll be in December, shortly before Christmas. And like, it's going to be incredible. And then I can have these panic moments of like, fuck, like with the live event, I'm like, I got a couple of things, I still have some more things to figure out, feel a little stressed about it. And then 30 minutes later, I'll go through a place of, I'm like, you know what? Everything will get done as it needs to get done. And so there will be this insanity of life. Insanity. Craziness, right? Of like, up down, busy, rest, happy, sad, elated, pissed. And you think that everything is supposed to be fucking all honky dory. Everything's supposed to be like smooth and flow and ease. And you're going to still have those days too. Those are good. But your life is designed to be rich with these experienced sister. We have this crazy idea that it's supposed to be this thing. Whatever that thing is in your mind, we put it on that pedestal and we go, if it's not that, then something's wrong with me. Then I must be fucking this up. Then I must not be the mother I am, the wife that I should be, the woman that I should be, the businesswoman that I should be, the entrepreneur I should be. Like, I'm not doing this right. I suck. Then we turn to things to numb and sedate ourselves. Food, booze, sex, shopping, Facebook, exercise, drugs. That's crazy. Because our life is designed to be this. It's designed to be all those things. And the sooner that you accept this, sister, the sooner that you realize that there's nothing wrong with you. You can become better. You can become more of you. But this is the way your life is. So I've got to wind this up because here rolls in my husband and my little boy Kai who's going to run in the office in probably about a minute. So here's your more tip for today. Where are you beating way, or too, way too fucking hard on yourself for thinking that your insane life is somehow wrong? And I want you to journal about this and see what insights come up. If you do not have the Woman Want More Limitation journal, you need to do this right now. Go, if you're on your phone or on your laptop, go in, type in drkarenosburn.com slash free journal. Get your free journal. I'm going to ship soon in a couple of weeks. I've sent out already 208 in 10 countries around the world, 10, 12 countries, and yours could be the next. And in addition, make sure to join the Women Wanting More Experience Facebook group. Go to Facebook, type in Women Wanting More Experience, request to be added to the group, and you're going to be part of the group that's almost at a thousand women now within this powerful group where I put in questions into that group two or three times a week, and you can start to get the support of other women who are like you, who want to also plug into the powerful woman that is she. So I will talk the next episode, sister. A life of more is one step away from you doing the fucking work every single day. I love and appreciate you. show notes of each Women Wanting More episode, including the how to get more tip. Subscribe to the newsletter at drkarenosburn.com slash newsletter.